Peter Dirk, you, you, you talked briefly about growing up. Um, your mother, Helga, was a concert pianist, German Jew, fled Berlin um, because of the Nazis, and, and brought tragedy into your life when, when she took her own life. How do you think that shaped you? Oh, lots of answers to that question. I mean, first of all, she, as a most extraordinary, gentle, um, funny, uh, secretive person. Yes. I think I come from the University of Denial because my whole childhood was closed doors and hidden truths. I only found out she was Jewish after she was dead. Yes. How is that possible? People say, how is it possible? Well, it's possible because we as children, children in those days didn't ask questions. We just didn't ask. Um, but, but she was, I mean, one thing she always said to us when she drove us to the Eisteddfords, Tessie, my sister, would play the piano and I would sing. My pa was always like, you must, you must win, you must win, you must win. Yes, yes, yes. And then Ma would say to us, she said, now have a wonderful time. I'm going to be in the audience. I'm going to enjoy it. You must love every minute. Yeah. And if you win, you get an ice cream. If you don't win, you get two ice creams. <laughs> She never <laughs> said the word lose. Yes. And that has stayed yes. with me for the rest of my life. I don't believe in failure. I believe it's non-success. It means you've got to try once or twice for it to grow up. It's still tiny and it hasn't been formed. She gave me that instinctive belief that a good idea cannot die because it hasn't worked the first time around. And her music. I mean, I grew up as a little poop hikey in my little crib. With, and they had a chamber music group of, of wonderful people. And they played Schumann and Schubert. And... Mozart was my, Amadeus was my best friend. I couldn't believe he was dead. His music was yes. so alive. So my whole life has had this buzz track of great, great music, which is sometimes the music of angels. And it has helped me tremendously. You were planning to be a teacher. And I understand mm. you had a very good teacher. Uh, let me check the name. Aloise Nell. Aloise Nell, my English teacher, yes. Who told you, apart from all the things she was meant to teach you, that you can do anything. How important was it in your life, apart from your mother, who sounds wonderfully positive, whatever you did, to have someone who focused on you and said, Peter Dirk, do whatever you want, it'll work out? Well, first she took us, the class, to a, you know, an Afrikaans school, Nassau school, Afrikaans school. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Standard 7. Took, took us to the little theater to see our set would play. Right. King Lear. Lekker for Afrikaans school, King Lear. Yeah. And I mean, that opened my eyes. I fell in love with it. I mean, that probably is the biggest reason why I actually am doing what I'm doing, because I just, this magic never All left brought me. to life. It was just something I just thought, oh, what is this? What is this? And then w when I had to write a poem for him in, in English, and I panicked, and I, I said, Miss Akon, she said, Peter, you can do anything. Mm. If you believe in it and work towards it, you can do anything. And again, that stayed with me. And, and we kept in touch. I mean, she only died a few years ago. And of course, I always thought she was old when I was at school. She was only about eight years older than me. Yes, yes. Um, and she was a great mentor and a, and a wonderful friend. Uh, and again, again, teachers. I, I have a, such an admiration and love for teachers who are the most important influence in the life of a child because parents are too busy. You, you've spoken about your father, Hannes, by all accounts, um, a, a man putting pressure on you, conservative background. But I've also heard you say that he helped you to shape your work as well. That he said, don't stick your finger in my eye, use it to tickle me at the back of the ear. I'm paraphrasing. Absolutely. But, but tell us about what sounds like a complicated relationship. I think the complications probably came from me not yes. actually understanding that his discipline was important. Um, he was a very egocentric man. He was very much, it was all about him. And I remember he always said, May house, May car, May tone. It was never ons house of ons yes. car, which, which also stayed with me. And I'm very, very keen to share. I like sharing with people. I like people to also be part of what I enjoy. Um, but my father, who was terrified of what I was doing at the Space Theatre, because everything we did there was illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had friends in government because his cousin was Dr. Diaf Milan, the first apartheid prime minister. So we came from that part. Mm. of the of the uh, of Politburo. Um, and, and of course, I used swear words to actually piss him off. I think I was childish in what I was doing. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to make them cross. Even if he wasn't in the audience. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody, yes. the worms, the yeah. the policeman, yeah. they did, you know. Yeah. And so, cock and poop, cock and poop. Um, and then I didn't realize that I was writing political statements in my plays of breaking mm. all the laws. Mm. A, 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 a white man and a, and a colored woman having a relationship or a white man and a colored man having a relationship. Or, and Pa eventually threw me out of the house. And I went and found a room in Long Street while I was working at the Space Theater. That suited me fine because I thought, 
Then I saw Connie Mulder, our Minister of the Interior, announcing in the newspaper that they were looking for Afrikaners of substance, for understand Afrikaners, to join the censor board. And I thought, that's a job for Pa, because I've just been banned three times. Yes. And I said, why didn't you become a member of the censor board? He said, for what? I said, you'll see films free and uncut. Yes. And he was there like a shot. Oh, Suddenly, he joined? Yes. Okay. My father was a censor. Okay. Now, how about that for bringing the house down? <laughs> And it changed our lives. Yes. He immediately, within two weeks, he said, come, come and have lunch with me. I want to talk to you. And he talked to me, not at me. Mm. And he said, are you frightened of them? I said, it's the National Party government. They're all powerful. He said, no, no, no. I'm not about the government. I'm talking about the censor board. I said, it's the same thing. He said, not the same thing. They're old fools. They don't know what they're doing. They just banned this wonderful Fellini film. I want to kill them. Don't be frightened of them. Yes. Make fun of them. Mark al It's a great Afrikaans yes. word. He actually opened that door. Door, really I suddenly things. earned money. I mean, yes. I wasn't earning 20 rand 50 a week. I was earning 15,000 rand a week in 1981. Yeah. That was a lot of money. Yeah. And Pa said, Boki, come I too. And, yes. and suddenly I went home and I could say to him, it's okay. I know it's, we need a new roof. I'll, 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 I'll put it in. I'll buy a new car. I'll give you money. I'll give you money. I'll bribe you, Pa. Yes. You know, just calm down. And slowly and surely we formed... I think a most extraordinary relationship of, of, of care and love.